I was dean's list every semester, and I finished with a 3.76, I believe. I work for the town of Watertown. I'm a laborer is my actual title. It's something I, I, I could do forever, but I, do I want to? No. That's the biggest problem, I feel like, with students right out of college is everything you see, it's like five years experience required, two years experience required, and you can't get a job unless you have experience, and you can't get experience unless you have a job. I know people who have picked up and moved and are working in different parts of the country. And I knew I was applying to jobs all over the country, but sometimes it's like what you want in life changes. It's funny now because when I keep in touch with other people, no one is doing what they thought they were going to do. And I'm not the only one who didn't opt out for grad school, even though we all said it. I'm Ed Norton. I'm from Watertown. Obviously, I work for the town of Watertown. I basically get to do different jobs of paving, snow plow, sidewalk work, anything kind of small construction you can think of, we, we kind of do here. Uh, going to a private college was not cheap. In fact, it came out owing about $80,000 in my own, my own loans, my own name. So thankfully, I was able to get a job like this where I can afford to pay my student loans and you know not go into any more financial debt and continue in the career path. That I, that I intend on going. My name is Tom Brown. I went to Southern Connecticut State University and graduated in 2011 with a degree in communications with a specification in video production. I was fortunate in that I started a job while I was in college and it actually had nothing to do with video production. I kind of steered it in that direction when I told them I had video production skills but most of my work was online at home and um, once I graduated I kind of moved up the ladder and was kind of given more responsibility and that's when I kind of gave myself another title as a media manager and was able to go to conferences and help shoot interviews um, for the company. I'm Christina Chiarelli and I'm a reporter with itsrelevant.com in Stamford, Connecticut. It's always interesting trying to tell people what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because it's not just one thing. It's, <laughs> I'm not just a reporter. I'm a photographer, I'm an editor, I'm a producer, I'm my own assignment desk. It can be frustrating sometimes not working for a traditional news company. That's been the goal for me, is to work for a TV station. But I work for people who don't have a journalism background. As a reporter, I feel like I've grown a lot in the past two and a half years that I've been working at this job but not at the rate as some of my other fellow grads or co-workers who have actually left the site and are working at TV stations now. My name is Lee. I graduated from Southern Connecticut State University. I got a Bachelor of Science in Anthropology. I was going to go to school, and then I was going to go to grad school, and then I was going to get a PhD, and then I was going to travel all the world, and write about cultures and write about different societies and how they interact with each other. And over time, everything changed. Obviously, when you graduate, you have to pay off student loans. So that was a big thing that I immediately started thinking about. And I wasn't really prepared to just go right out of school and go right back into school. I feel like our whole lives, we're sort of told that we need to go to school and we don't really have a choice in the matter. And college is the one time where you get to choose where you go to school and what you go to school for, but you're still going to school. So I kind of wanted to take a break and get a little real world experience. You know, I went to school for criminal justice. I have a bachelor's degree in investigative services. Uh, my dream is to work for the federal government. I actually did an internship with ICE, which is uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement. And I actually have an application in right now with uh, U.S. Capitol Police, which is down in D.C. Uh, it's a branch of Secret Service, which I'm actually going for my physical fitness test in January for. Right now, unfortunately, I've been recently laid off. Um, it was a money issue, uh, which I guess is common in a lot of jobs these days, is that they just don't have the money to keep a lot of the employees, and so they downsized significantly. And since I was the newest guy in the totem pole, it was easier to cut me out, so to speak. I don't have the experience of having graduated college without a job 
a career per se, because a lot of people work through college in order to pay off um, college tuition. You know, not having a job anymore and not having gone through being unemployed, putting yourself out there, um, it's all very scary. Um, this job to me was kind of like a stepping stone, but it's been a really big stepping stone. It's hard for me to imagine moving. I've applied to stations in Connecticut. I've had people put good words in for me. And um, I've been told by news directors, you don't have enough experience. You don't know how frustrating that is when I say to myself, I've had two and a half years of experience. What the heck are you talking about? There was just a lot of things that weren't really going in the direction that I saw myself going in. I started getting a little depressed in the position I had there at Gateway. Day in and day out, I found myself very unhappy in that office setting. It just wasn't really what I discovered, what I really truly wanted for myself. I don't mind the job at all. Uh, I, got, I work with a great bunch of guys. You know, obviously it's not what I went to school for. Um, but, I, but I do like the job. It's a great job. You know, I get paid well. I get medical benefits, vacation time. And I'm actually lucky too because it's also a great stepping stone for what I want to do. Uh, you know, I get to build a lot of community ties here. I just want to get into the field. And so if I can just be working with video content for a company on a regular basis, you know, that'll kind of keep me going until I can have a position of leverage where I can start saying, okay, I've done this, I've put in the experience, now I can start applying for positions that require experience. My day job is part-time. I work part-time right now and I work in IT. I actually work at a college and I do password resets all day. So that's what I get the most consistent income from. It was a New Year's resolution for me to get out of my little slump, get out of my depression, and first start with self-image. And one of the ways I felt that I could accomplish this was by hula hooping. It was just a fun fitness activity. So I started doing it and I started noticing a little weight loss. And then I was like, I really want to get good at this. For quite a period of time, I think it was like five months Gigs were the only way I could pay my bills. Like I would just go around and hula hoop and entertain people at like corporate events or birthday parties or with DJs that I would just randomly call up and be like, hey, I'm a hula hooper. I can do some really crazy stuff. Do you need a hula hooper at your event? As soon as I found out that there was a studio that opened up that was teaching aerial silk trapeze classes, I totally jumped on it and I haven't looked back since. Law enforcement has been something I've wanted to do my entire life. There was never a doubt in my mind. In fact, if I do go into law enforcement, I'd be the fourth generation of my family to do it. Um, like I said, the reason why I applied to University of New Haven was it's, it's what's known for, criminal justice. So it was the only school I applied to and I got into it. Um, and to me, that job is more than just a job. Uh, it's something I get to go to every day. I get to be close to the community, which is right in my heart, something my grandfather, who's my idol, kind of, you know, taught me. He knew everybody, everybody loved him. Uh, it's something I, I get to be with everybody every day and I get to help him do things. Really right now I'm putting most of my eggs in the WWE basket. Um, I've heard that they're starting their own network. I'm going to really try to push for, for the WWE. I mean, there's motion graphics work, there's editing work. Um, I'm assuming if they're becoming their own network that they're going to start doing a lot more in-house production. So, you know, who knows? The possibilities are there, and it's good timing to seize the opportunity. Um, I've been out of the video production game for a couple years, so that's kind of nerve-wracking but exciting at the same time because I have to kind of play catch-up and see what I've missed and, you know, learn all of the new software and programs and all that jazz. But uh, it's fun because I'm young and you know I have a good resume and that's important and I have a good demo reel and that's important so we'll see. On Wednesday nights I teach hula hoop fitness. I teach tricks to my girls and we've got a pretty good camaraderie going. They're learning different tricks. I've taught different workshops all over the place and usually my weekends I'm teaching at workshops, I'm performing 
or I'm working with a DJ. I have all these different jobs and all these different jobs pay out and go into little different accounts that I have for different things. But all the hoop stuff goes back into my craft. So that's the one I really want to make a career out of. It's relevant is not the dream. And now it's like, what is the dream? I love being a reporter. I want to be a reporter. But where do I go from here? So I'm at this crossroad in my life where it's either I move or I stay at it's relevant until I figure out what else I'm going to do with my life. Do you know how hard that is? I've wanted to be a reporter since I was like 14. I'm 24 now. That's 10 years of my life dreaming that. Uh, my grandfather was my idol. He was my best friend, he was my hero. Unfortunately, I only got to know him for a short period of time. He passed away when I was eight, but I did everything with him. He babysat me, he picked me up at school, I spent every weekend with him. Uh, he was a Watertown police officer for over 20 years. And actually, I didn't even know this until when I started this job, he actually started working here before he was a Watertown police officer. Um, but he taught me so much. I mean, I even have a tattoo with his name on my, you know, my ribs. He's just absolutely my idol. He's the reason why uh, you know, I went into criminal justice and the reason why I did so well in school. I, I promised him before he passed away that you know, I'd, uh, I'd always stay on the honor roll and I'd go to college for him. So yeah, I want law enforcement, I want criminal justice, but my true reasoning for school is always my grandfather. I guess what really, really drives me is just self-sustainability. To be perfectly honest, I want to be able to take care of myself 100% without relying on others. And I want that to overflow to where I can take care of my family if they need it and I can be comfortable. I'm not looking to live a lavish lifestyle of you know cars and houses and all of that stuff. I just want to live and I want to be able to do that without worry and that kind of it kind of pushes me enough to where I might try for that job that requires experience to try to convince them to give me the job. Hooping and my craft, all of that, really came into play when I took a step back and I took myself out of this box that culture and society sort of put us in. And I was like, what do I want to do for myself without any outside influence, without someone telling me that's a bad idea? Because it's hula hooping. Who's really going to take that seriously? No one so far has taken me seriously. And every single time I've gone out there, I've had to prove exactly what I can do. Everyone thinks it's just on your waist. And then when I actually show them what I can do, it makes me happiest when I sort of make them shut up because they go from not taking me seriously to being completely inspired by me. And that not only is a sense of, I get a sense of gratitude and I'm very humbled by it, but I am also empowered by it. And to me, happiness is just taking a grip of your life and not really letting anyone else steer you in any direction other than what feels right by you. I've been thinking it's like this quarter life crisis, you know, people talk about that. And it's like, is this my quarter life crisis? <laughs> is this uh, the time where you grow up and you stop dreaming? Is this, uh, you know, do I get just get a nine to five job? I do something else, go into PR, go into marketing or something. I know a lot of people that have done that. Most people have done that, that are journalism majors that I know. And they have good lives. I mean, it's not like they don't have good lives. But, uh, I don't know which dream I want to give up on. I don't know if I want to give up on being a reporter or if I want to give up the dream of being near my family, being near the people I love, and settling my life here. Thank you.